Hi, I'm Jeff Farnwall, Director of the MBA Program at Rockford College. About 18 months ago, the Rockford Chamber of Commerce set out to make networking easier in Rockford by identifying area people you should know in business. Currently, 41 people have been recognized and celebrated as one of these people. This series of talks held at Rockford College was designed to provide a vehicle for the public to hear from and learn about each of the people you should know. I hope you enjoy this talk. Well, thank you all for coming out to Rockford College today. We really appreciate everyone here. And this is such an amazing crowd to come out to kick off this People You Should Know talk series. Um, today we are honored to have Andreas Schell with us. He was um, the 2011 People You Should Know honoree, and he is from United Technologies Aerospace Systems. Um, as of January 2013, Mr. Schell is the president of Actuation Systems, um, which is based out of the UK. Uh, prior to that, he was in the president of Ele Electric Systems, which was here in Rockford um, since 2010. He is also a leader in the Rockford community, serving on many local boards, uh, task forces, and advisory groups. He will be sharing his thoughts about the Renaissance Company, uh, the symbiosis of corporations and its communities. Please walk, help me in welcoming Andrea Schell. I always appreciate the introduction. A lot of presidents, and I don't really kind of care too much about this one, but she did forget to mention, and I think that's most important for the discussion today, is that I was a citizen of uh, Rockford, and not of one of the surrounding areas, really, of the downtown area in Rockford, and I'm very proud of that, because that is part of uh, what I'm going to talk about here today. Now, <coughs> um, <coughs> first of all, um, it feels uh, a bit strange on the guinea pig I was told about my soul. <laughs> this is what guinea pig looks like, so we're going to try this concept out, and I think uh, then uh, the people to follow me, and, uh, and I've seen the list of topics, um, they will then evolve this concept over time. I think it's a great idea that, uh, that we, we get an ever-changing audience and an ever-changing um, set of speakers up here, and an ever-changing set of topics. So uh, with that, I think enough of an introduction. Um, we're talking about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll leave some time for a question and answer time. Um, you said already my name, Andreas Schell, and up, to, up until last month I was running our electric systems business for UTC Aerospace Systems um, here in Rockford, Illinois. I think it's much better known as Sun Strands, um, and uh, that plays a role. I'll, I'll get back to that point of Sun Strands Sun and the heritage of Sun Strands later, and what role we played and what role we play today. Um, and uh, just recently I have relocated um, to the UK and I live in a small town. I'm going to live in a small town called Wolverhampton outside of Birmingham. My family is still going to stay here in, in Rockford, by the way. I have my wife today in the audience. <coughs> it's the first time I speak in front of my wife. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit more nervous. <laughs> I'm very proud to be a member of the inaugural class of um, the 20 people you should know in, um, in, in, in Rockford and I'm very pleased to be with you today to talk about this topic of uh, Red, a renaissance company and I think I'm not a historian, I'm not sure what your educational background is, so let's start first with a little bit of a definition. What is renaissance? Rebirth. Exactly, that's very good. You can work your points today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a French word simply meaning rebirth, but I think it stands for a lot more. So we kind of have to go backwards in time, 500 years, and we're at the outset of the medieval time, the so-called Dark Ages. Lots of wars, lots of political, lots of social conflicts there in Europe. And all of a sudden, there is kind of a rise of the horizon where, um, where intelligent people start changing the society. Um, it is spawned by the idea of Renaissance men like for instance, Leonardo da Vinci, um, who lived from 1452 to 1590. And the Renaissance was almost typified, typified by his famous Vitruvian man drawing that's shown here. Um, so, the, and da Vinci had a lot of very balanced talents. Um, does anyone know what he did with this picture? He tried to define an ideal man. So he tried to really kind of take nature and he kind of tried to define basically geometry um, on the human body there. So he kind of gave definition of the ideal man and the proportion of an ideal man. 
So the approach of basically taking, taking nature and science and putting this together. Um, but, but I think it really stands for a lot more than, than just this point there. It, it, it stands for this, this period in time where basically um, artists and scientists basically went out um, to, to basically create a whole set of other, just in time. <laughs> Da Vinci was able to do this because of his broad base of pelvis. He could draw on both his creative right brain, but also his analytical left brain. Whatever the situation required. And there were many, many people like that during those days that had those um, abilities. Well, this is more than just simple intelligence. Intelligence in itself is not rare. But this ability to see beyond traditional boundaries and to integrate or synthesize something completely new, I think that is rare. And it is very powerful. Anyone read the Steve Jobs book? I think it comes close to what Steve Jobs means by saying connecting the dots. Uh, you're looking into arts, you're looking into beauty, and at the same time you're looking into technical and scientific approaches. Don't worry, this is not going to be a history lecture here today. We're going to come back to what does this mean to Robert. Being whole brain is not very natural for most of us. Um, but it can be cultivated. Let me give you an example. I have two sons, Louis and Janis. And each of them is very predisposed to certain things. One is very technically oriented. He takes a lot of pleasure and joy to take things apart and put them back together again. The other is more inclusive being like a little actor. He acts about him. He is more into singing himself. Um, I think as parents, we, we have the challenge there to kind of move them out of their comfort zone to really cultivate this thought of a, of a whole brain approach there. And so as a, as a father, I must constantly encourage them to kind of create for themselves a more balanced perspective. I think similarly as business leaders, I have the responsibility to encourage our employees to do the same kind of whole brain thinking. Um, when, you, when you run a business, you often find these people, well, I'm a finance guy. Well, okay, that's good, but what keeps you ways a finance guy to think creative how you kind of support sales and marketing, for instance, in their endeavor. So, so you see, within a company, you have the same thing, left, set, left brain and right brain. Now, how does a Renaissance company act that's different from other types of companies? Specifically in how they engage in the community, and that's really our focus of the discussion here today. First, these companies, they look beyond their own interest and work for a common cause. Well, sounds easy, right? Working for a common cause, isn't that what we all want to do? Well, what's the reality? What, what do investors expect of leaders in the business? Profit returns, right? right. So they're giving me resource, resources here in reference. It's 1,200 people, and they say, go off and do something with it, but please do not come home with less than what your target profit is. <laughs> right? right? Because you all want to have returns on your, your stock um, deposits, right? And so you all have expectations on returns on stocks and on savings. Now, so we have a conflict here. Yeah? We have a conflict here that on one side, companies want to do the good, the common cause, but on the other side, there is this often conflictual interest. Well, second, these companies engage both sides of the brain in their communities. And quite frankly, that means that those companies often have to act outside of what their comfort zone is. And we'll, we'll show the, I'll show this later to you. That's tough stuff, but here in Rockford, I think we can do it. We've shown this, um, I think, very successfully during our community-wide effort to bring MP Riddle here in the town. Um, as part of that process, and it was a real pleasure to see how the many often fractionalized parties here in Rockford got together, got on the same page, because we all had one common um, goal, one common mission. Throughout Rockford, our companies, educational institutions, and the community at large have come together to tackle some very complex challenges with our public, public education system. And I'll talk about this in a few moments. We are doing that because we're building at our core these symbiotic relationships that are looking for those solutions that will move us forward together. To better understand this, let's look at how companies and communities typically interact. I've outlined three distinct levels with Renaissance companies operating at the third 
or highest level of community interaction. Now, first, um, can you see the picture back there? Okay. So first is philanthropy. Well, many companies give their financial support to charities in their communities. There's nothing wrong with this. This is good. This helps communities. It's a very important, essential foundation for communities. Perhaps there is even an executive that um, um, works as a chair of a campaign or lends his voice as a spokesperson to a particular organization. Philanthropy is very critical. It is admirable. And it is, or but, it is fundamental. It is the basis. Well, UTC Aerospace Systems, my company, does that. For example, I think last year we contributed about $900,000 here as part of the United Way campaign that basically flows back into, um, into the Rock, Rock River Valley. Um, and that is including United Way contributions that fund the equivalent of 36 out of the United Way's 84 agencies here in the region. So quite a significant um, impact. Well, for that portion of our community funding, that is outside of the United Way, we have strategically focused our giving into areas that meet critical needs in our community. Um, when I arrived here three years ago, I sat down with um, the, the committee in charge of community giving. And it was interesting. We had an Excel spreadsheet, a spreadsheet that you could print out. It was like 10 pages long. <laughs> we had given like very little, I, I would call them insignificant amounts to too many organizations. And we basically had a discussion and said, look, we have to kind of give a few of these organizations a letter and say, we cannot support you going forward. And go and get a line behind what's really core, what's important to us. And there's three areas, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math education. The second, environmental programs or environment programs that build sustainable cities. And last but not least, support of the arts that builds a more vibrant community. community. So three things, STEM, environment and arts and now our giving is aligned amongst those we have a lesser number of organizations we can support but we support them with what i think is more significant in the end and helps us to kind of do the right things better aggregating those dollars has really helped us as a company move the needle in areas we important from our company's perspective versus supporting several hundred initiatives and doing this um, basically with too little of an impact on this but Innovative companies, they don't stop at financial contributions. Those operating, we're now at the second level, those operating at the second level directly engage the community. They not only give their funds, I think they give something more valuable, and that's their time and their talent. Um, so you see how, the, how it builds up. These companies build a culture that encourages employees to become deeply involved. And I think this aspect of building culture is enormously important. If, you're, if your organization doesn't have to be a company, doesn't have that culture, I don't believe you're really serious about supporting your company. They build, um, and the efforts then will be acknowledged in the long term because you're starting to make an impact in the community that you surround. Today, at uh, UTC Aerospace Systems here in Rockford, we have hundreds of employee volunteers that donate their time to the community. They serve on nearly 50 boards of directors and give thousands of hours each year to causes they feel personally passionate about. Now, let me pause for a moment. Um, I started here three years ago, by the way, with Bob Grohl here in the audience, who is a very active supporter of the community um, working for, for UTC Aerospace Systems. We we sat down and we were looking at our community engagement and a lot of the employees said, well, headquarter moved away after the merger of Hamilton and Sun's friend. We're really not kind of like, we don't have the financial support, we don't have the financial backing anymore. And I think my answer at that time thought was, so what? <laughs> and we started building this up all from new. I think we were engaged maybe in a, maybe at best in probably four or five organizations here. And you see three years later, um, we're at nearly 50 boards that we are engaged. And I'll come back to you why we are doing this in the end, because I think it is crucial. And if someone comes and says, well, we don't really have the financial backing or headquarters is at a different location, I think the only answer is, so what? Because I think you have to really remind people what can be done with the resources here available. And it comes to this aspect of lending time and lending talent. <coughs> Our people are personally engaged as never before. And I'll give you a few examples. Um, they leave work during the day, and that's accepted in our company. 
we're not asking necessarily where are you every minute in the day, it's accepted, because we have people that are passionate about what they're doing, so they leave work, and they go to schools, they go to other institutions, and one of the examples is that uh, we are supporting um, middle schools and high schools as mentors to students, and as technology advisors for teachers. Now when we're now in our third year at Lincoln, Lincoln Middle School, where 30 engineers give at least one hour per week, and they mentor 60 students at Lincoln Middle School. Now, we like to measure things at UTC Aerospace Systems. <laughs> the scores of those students have increased by 31%. Now, what about that? Uh, so, again, thank you. And again, it's about moving the needle. We mentor various student robotics teams throughout the year. Last month, our engineers, they, they set up a mock product design review with one of the robotic teams. So you all know these first robotics teams there, so the students go there. No, we brought them in, and we had some of our most experienced engineers sit down with them to review their design. Now, this team is about to file a patent, or they're considering filing a patent on the solution they gained out of this. So if you see what's possible, we're not talking hundreds of hours, we're talking a handful of hours that those engineers were dedicating time. But again, it's the passion that drives them, and in the end, it's the underlying culture in the company that enables them to be done. Our regular East Spring teacher um, teams into our facility and discuss how math and science curricul curriculum they are teaching is being used in the industry today. We had uh, last year a busload of teachers in our facility and I think some of them went away with eyes wide open, realizing that there is a gap between the reality and the school system today, and what the industry today needs, and that this is about how we close together this gap. This is not a, play, uh, a, a blaming game. This is not about kind of pointing fingers at each other. This is just the realization of what we need to do in order to get better. Two evenings each month, employees hold a free Explorer, explorer post meeting at UTC Aerospace Systems where students conduct hands-on experiments and have engineering careers mentors to help them guide in their career choices. Another important aspect, and uh, I think in my time um, here in Rockford, I've never sent anyone away the personally <coughs> that came and said, hey, can you give me some guides? That's why I can make a comment about the president. It doesn't matter who you are in the company. When someone comes and says, can you help me? I have to make a few choices. Uh, can be the neighbor's kid who says, I'd like to kind of think about what I would, would like to do when I'm grown up. Um, I think that's a responsibility that all of us have and that we need to stand up for. We've also formed and funded a variety of employee resource groups. So these groups, they are self-organized groups. They are, um, and we have five of them in total, so they range all the way from women in aerospace, there are the Asian, the Asian Pacific Group, the Hispanic Leadership Forum, the Young Professional Organization, and, uh, and the Afro-American Network. So these, so five community resource groups, so they are self-organized, each one of them has an executive as a mentor that they can go to and they can ask questions and, and seek, uh, seek support if they need to, but they're pretty much self-organized. What's interesting is that each one of these groups operates completely autonomously. And uh, I think it's actually a great way because so the, the, the employees in our company, when they come in, when they start, even if they've been there for a few years, they have a home within a group of people of a common interest. And what's really interesting of, for, for what all of these groups have in common, that they have chosen the community um, engagement and the, especially the aspect of education, the education system as their core interest there. So each one of these five groups is going out there and supporting educational systems here in Rockford as their prime thing. What I want you to understand is that as a company, we do not impose on those groups, go and make this your number one priority. It's like passion. You can't go to a person and say, you're going to be passionate about it, right? It doesn't work like that. And you can't hardly measure passion, and you can't hardly put measure on your objective sheet for this calendar. It doesn't work like that. And, but I think what these groups develop is, through their volunteerism work, is um, passion, passion for their life. And I think that that's what's going to sustain them in the long haul. That's why, actually, I'm very confident you're going to see a lot more out of PTC aerospace systems, even though I am leaving now on to a new post. I think it's the culture and the passion that has built in the organization that I was privileged to lead, and that will kind of continue um, to support Rockford here. Now, Going on to the third level, and finally, after 
couple of minutes, we are at the threshold of a Renaissance company. Again, keep in mind, Renaissance is standing for rebirth. This third level, that's to me what I would call social innovation. Renaissance companies innovate and build new models that bridge across companies, organizations, and initi initiatives. They create symbiotic relationships through which the whole community moves forward together. As I said earlier, these companies help their communities engage both sides of the brain. And what Rockford has done in the past couple of years with education, I believe, is a prime example for that. For technical companies like mine, it means engaging the right brain, integrating the art of public discourse into our solutions and recognizing not everything can be quantified. That's difficult for us, um, because we're in a field where everything needs to be quantified somehow. Um, it means we bring teachers in to show them how industry uses what they are teaching and helping develop curriculum based not only on facts, but also learning the art of how to teach those facts. For schools, it means better engaging the left brain so that they build in more rigor and measurement into their processes and understand the independencies that can drive real and lasting improvement. Up until last month, I was a founding member, I was very proud of that, of Alignment Rockford, Governing Board. And several other UTC Aerospace employees are working on committees and subcommittees at Alignment Rockford. As you probably, and I should say hopefully, know, um, Alignment Rockford is devoted to building pathways for high schools, high school students, so they can make informed choices about their future careers. Through Alignment Rockford, companies, here in Rockford have successfully broken down all barriers between themselves and with the school system. So you may be asking yourself, why does a company like ours, why does a company like ours, we make airplane parts for a living every single day, why do we think that we're all of a sudden an expert in education? Well, the answer is we are not. Education is an art, and the teachers and the administrators are clearly the experts in this. But what we do understand, and I would say better than many, many other companies, better than anyone else, in fact, is how to integrate processes and how to make them more efficient. And how to identify earlier when those processes need to be adjusted based on predictive data. UTC Aerospace Systems exist in a data-driven profession and industry. Aerospace, this is really all about data. And every day we use the data to scientifically analyze needs to integrate existing ideas or create entirely new ones. When we think we have a solution, we model it, we test it, we build something up, and we apply meaningful measurements to continually improve it. Throughout the process of building Alignment Rockford, this community has proven that it can use both sides of its brain. And I believe this will be one of Rockford's shining achievements in the coming years as we prepare students for the for 21st century careers and fill the pipe the talent pipeline for our local community. This is in the end what this is all about. I could, by the way, spend an entire evening talking to you about what my what my belief is what a 21st century career is. I think there's a few students here in the room. You're up for a run, let me tell you that. <laughs> it is much different than what it was when I was um, finishing my, my high school and my university education um, 20, 25 years ago. Um, we are living in a world that I think is way more complex than back then, where it is not enough to just kind of get educated in a, in a single discipline today, um, where I think you need to be thinking way more complex, you need to think outside of the box, not once, but continuously every single day. And I would encourage you to choose your curriculum wisely to, to get ready for this. Um, and it's not going to get easier. Another example of this Renaissance behavior is the Joint Institute of Engineering and Technology. Does anyone here know that? Hands up. Okay, I think we have to do a little more in marketing on this one. <laughs> JETA, Joint Institute of Technology and Engineering and Technology, is a homegrown community model that allows students to integrate high quality internships with their academic studies in a unique way. It's formed through the relationships um, of about 20 partners, many of which have historically been <coughs> competitors. But they were able to set aside their own interest for the sake of developing talent and providing an engineering workforce pipeline in our community. 
we have a strong need. We need to hire between 50 and 100 people per year going forward just to keep up with attrition. Uh, so that's just the talent that we as one company here in this community need. And we can't afford to go outside of this community and bring people and relocate them to work for So there's a strong need that we need to develop the best engineers right here in town. If that trust and synthesis um, hadn't occurred, Je Jeddah would, wouldn't be as successful as it is turning out to be. It would merely be another case of let's, uh, let's try something old again uh, and see if it turns out something better. One of our company's key manager um, actually is the executive director of Jeddah. So we, have, we took one person in, in our company, he's a full-time job in our company, and he's now running um, this, as an executive director. He's not just overseeing the activities as a board member there. He's managing the day-to-day -day business of Cheddar with a team up there. And why can he do this? Because in our company, we have accepted that there are moments when he's there and his other job, and we're support, supporting him on this one. And this is clearly working at this third level of commitment and he um, the grow, he knows basically that he has that support and commitment and is backing by us as a company. There's a lot of untapped talent at companies and organizations throughout this city, and I would encourage those people to come forward. Rock, Rockford needs your energy and your ideas. I was at a very nice community reception last night with many friends, and I really uh, had a very enjoyable evening, and someone said last night, of course, you have to be a bit pushy on this. You need to kind of really go out and say it as it is. So let me be very clear on this one. Get out of your comfort zone. Get this message out there. There is a lot of companies here in Rockford. I believe there is a lot of companies here where there is this corporate excuse. We don't have the headquarter anymore. Um, there is a chart up there, um, a picture up there. It normally hangs in our hallway in our house. Um, I guess I find this such a beautiful picture. It shows Rockford over. Anyone see this picture? It's such a wonderful thing. It tells the history of Rockford. But it, and unfortunately, some of the companies aren't here anymore. And if they are here, not here anymore, some of them have moved the headquarters out um, to other um, to other locations. But it shows how Rockford kind of um, had a very vibrant community innovating. Well, I think we're still living on the value that was created in the past. And this is something that has to change. And that's why I would encourage you to not make this argument of, well, we don't have headquarters here anymore, we don't have the resources here anymore. Do something with the resources here at your disposal. Just set it, make it a priority to come. Now, and for your students in the audience, I would urge you, don't, so, don't become so involved solely in building a career that you forget about building your community. This is a question of authenticity. And uh, there's going to be a speaker, I think it is in May, that talks about personal marketing and personal branding. So you should probably come back and listen to that uh, lecture. It's about marketing, no? <laughs> Don't forget that there is a life outside of developing your career where you can lend your tongue and think about it. I would encourage you to go home tonight and think about how many minutes or hours in this week have you spent outside of developing your own career. How much have you done um, in building a network that helps and supports this community? And think about the talents you have at your disposal that have gotten you so far and what you can give back to the community. I can tell you a few more years down the road, you're going to kind of um, have a better understanding of that there is a need there in the surrounding community that draws on you. Um, This requires a bit of a backing of the family. That's why I'm actually happy my wife is here. It's a good moment to say thanks. Thanks to her for all the, all the time um, she's been with me. Because quite frankly, it comes to decisions at the end. If after a long day of 10 or 12 hours at work, do you go and uh, spend one more hour on the board of, uh, of, a, of a discovery center or, on, or with a line in Rockford, do you cut back on this private time? But look, in life, it's always about personal, making personal choices and decisions. And I think we have that, uh, we have that responsibility. I believe that Rockford has made some difficult systemic changes in the past couple of years, and that it is now on its way to real and lasting improvements to its education system, and by extension to its overall attractiveness <coughs> to new residents and new companies looking to locate here. I don't know what I'm talking about. When we were about to move to Rockford, and we looked up Rockford, and 
the statistics of Rockford up on the internet, this wasn't the most attractive place to move. We leave, you know, we leave um, really with uh, being very sad about leaving Rockford because we have gained a lot of appreciation here for Rockford. But you know what? There's others that probably turned on Rockford as an option, and we need those people um, to come here. So we need to do something about this community. I'm personally very proud of the contributions our company and our employee volunteers have made and continue to make in those improvements. In the end, when things like Alignment Rockford and Jeddah are successfully willing, um, filling our workforce pipeline with local talent, UTC Aerospace Systems will be one of those <coughs> who reaps the benefits. So again, now we're coming back to what the crew expectations of my job are every single day, so there's going to be a benefit at some point in time. Is, it, is this stuff easy to do? No, absolutely not. It takes commitment and it takes long-term support. It means standing firm against those forces in the company that then revert back to a traditional focus on short-term profits versus long-term community sustainability. What continues to fuel our company's efforts in this? First, it is the pride that our employees feel from being part of a company that makes these commitments. And I can tell you that I've been stayed always in close contact with every employee that we've had here in Rockford. And I believe this is this makes really a difference when you have people that come to work because they like the company they work for, because they read about this company in the newspaper and what we've done in the community they live in. Isn't this a much, much, much better proposition than you read about something positive from your company, what we've done in the community versus the opposite? This creates energy, and I'd rather have energetic people there and the time at work, and then we deliver better returns. Second, it changes the community's perception of itself from being in a downward spiral to being in a phase of renewal for a better, stronger future. I'm at the end, in closing, I'd like to say that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my time here in Rockford. Um, frankly, I will miss it, and uh, I'm looking uh, what kind of level of sustainable engagement I can have in Rockford in the long run, because uh, frankly, my family and I really like this community here. Rockford is a fabulous community, and one that I believe is poised right on the brink of its own renaissance. This renaissance does not happen, it's not an automatism that will generate it. So it requires people to kind of walk out of here and say, I'm going to do something different, and that's what I would encourage you to think about. Thank you for your attention, and I would like to use the rest of your time today for any questions or comments here.